In the summer months, a lot of fishermen forget about trying to catch something to eat and turn their attention to the great game fish that come inshore with the warm northern currents. In southern New South Wales and Victoria, rock fishermen turn their attention to yellowfin tuna, bluefin tuna, and these days a lot are even concentrating on marlin. But in northern New South Wales, southern Queensland and West Australia, the warm currents of summer bring the best of both worlds to the rock fishermen. In these waters, summertime is Spanish mackerel time, and spinning for Spaniards is the name of the game. When Joe Gospel and I went to Hat Head to fish for Spaniards, we spent the first afternoon taking a long, careful look at the water around the headland. The view you get from the Trigg station at the top of the headland is pretty spectacular, but we were a lot more interested in the view we had of big schools of mullet moving into the beach from the open sea. Another thing that took our eye was the strong current line running all the way across from Smoky Cape to the tip of Hat Head. That combination of bait fish and a warm northern current running close inshore was nothing but good news. If the big Spaniards were around, they'd be waiting for us right on the end of that headland. When we started to fish the next morning, conditions were absolutely perfect for big Spaniards. A south wind at our backs, chopping up the surface of the sea, and that strong current still pushing right in against the end of the headland. Joe thought live baits might be a better proposition than lures in the early morning light. At Hat Head, the bait like most of the fish in the area, tends to be on the large side. Some people use a sprat to catch a mackerel. Joe used a pan-sized brim because it was the smallest thing he could catch. But live baits were soon ruled out. With the strong current running against the wind, there was just no way of keeping a float out away from the rocks. If we wanted to catch Spaniards, we were going to have to do it with lures. The tackle we use for this style of fishing is highly specialised and needs to be kept in immaculate condition. There are no second chances when you spin for game fish from the rocks. Most of the reels we use feature high six to one gearing, but this one of Joe's is something of a hot rod. It has a special outside transmission fitted that delivers nine turns of the spool for every turn on the handle. We carried five reels with us each day, and every night, each reel was completely stripped, cleaned, and then rebuilt. My pet aversion is the old story about the one that got away, and that's why we take so much care in rigging before we even start to fish. Every knot is checked, and then double checked. Big fish are just too hard to find to be lost over a silly thing like a badly tied knot. Fishing is an art within an art. It does call for a high degree of casting skill, but sheer perseverance is the most important thing the spin fisherman can have going for him. The whole thing operates on a very simple principle. The man who hooks the most fish is the man who makes the most casts. After an hour of solid casting, Joe gets the first hook up for the day. A lively fish, but he's not going to break any records. Our first Spaniard for the trip 
and he's just a baby. A very young fish, around 15 pounds. Spanish mackerel have nothing in common with the small slimy mackerel we catch around our harbours and bays. Spaniards, or narrow barred Spanish mackerel if you want to be formal, have firm white flesh and big or small they make a superb table fish. There was quite a crowd on the rocks that first day. And once the bite got started, Spaniards were coming out of the water every few minutes. We had a red-hot bite going for us but not one of these fish weighed more than 17 pounds. Mind you, a 17 pound fish from the rocks is not something you'd want to complain about. But this spot has a reputation for really big fish, and that's all we were here for. Right in the middle of the mackerel bite, a little stranger came along, a mackerel tuna. In southern waters, these tuna are fished for sport, but in this area, they are just another bait fish. When a big fish does strike, everyone drops their own rod to lend a hand. But this one's been lightly hooked, and it doesn't take him long to break loose. Oh well, back to the drawing board. Joe Gospel really turned it on that day. It didn't seem to matter where he threw that lure, there was a fish sitting right there, waiting to eat it. This little fellow must have been raised on a straight diet of vitamin pills. He pulled so hard, he had us all filled into thinking he was a big fish. But when he came out of the water, he was only a little fellow like the rest of the fish caught that day. This is the sort of thing that separates the expert and the novice fisherman. With the action still going on, Joe put his rod aside and took time out to check what the fish had been feeding on. In this case, the Spaniards had all been feeding on blue pilchards. Knowing that, we were able to use lures exactly the same size and colour as the natural bait the big fish were chasing out there. I always think of Spaniards as being the wolves of the sea. The jaws are very long and full of razor-sharp teeth. They can cut a big mullet in half with a single bite. We use a short wire trace to the lure and then 15 feet of double line above that. And as you can see, every inch of that trace is absolutely necessary. This is the last thing a lot of bait fish ever see, and this fish almost had our camera for dessert. Trace materials and paintwork on lures have a short life in these waters. We often have to replace the entire trace after each fish has landed. These northern headlands may be prolific fish producers, but they're also incredibly difficult spots to get into. On this headland, you only catch as much as you can carry over a two mile track that was specifically designed for mountain goats. Between us, we had nearly 80 pounds of tackle and we added 70 pounds of fish to that load. I've heard it said that you pay for every pound of mackerel with a pound of sweat, and you'd better believe it's true. To fish mackerel from the rocks, you need to be half fisherman, half pack horse.
There's a rugged beauty about these headlands, and if you keep your eyes open, even a hard walk can have its own special rewards. Talk to anyone in this camping area and you talk to a fisherman. A lot of people see fishermen as a secretive sort of a crew, but when the Spaniards run, everyone wants to talk mackerel and mackerel fishing tackle. This fellow's a boat fisherman, and like most of the boatmen, he uses much heavier tackle than we can use spinning from the rocks. There's a lot of line on that reel, but when the big fish run in these waters, he'll need every inch of it, and may still find himself having to chase some fish with the boat. Like us, he only found small fish today, but tomorrow could be a different story altogether. Like I said, this is a fisherman's camp, and this is just the way a day should end in a fishing camp. A good catch to be cleaned and washed, and a little sunburn to let you know you've been out of doors. And then there's the finishing touch, fresh mackerel steaks cooked over an open fire. Oh, wow. There must be some way a man could make a living doing this sort of thing. The next day, the wind was a lot stronger and the sea too rough for the small boatmen. The rock fishermen seemed to be resting on their laurels too. Joe and I had the whole headland and the sea to ourselves. We still wanted that big fish, and the only way to get him was to keep right on casting. We average a complete cast and retrieve every 40 seconds, and we fish up to six hours a day. On a slow day, when the fish are scarce, that adds up to a lot.